Hi everyone. Welcome to Cinematic Excrements. In case you can't tell, I'm not terribly excited to talk about this movie today. But since it won Worst Picture, I know a bunch of you are gonna be up my ass if I don't. But will it be worth it? I mean, if you thought my show was getting too political before, ho oh Jesus! So if you don't want to hear anything political, well, I'm kind of wondering why you clicked play in the first place, but seriously, stop watching this video right now. Okay, for the three or four of you who are still here, this is Hillary's America, a secret history of the Democratic Party. But first, a little backstory on the guy who made the film. Hillary's America is a documentary, of sorts, by Dinesh D'Souza, a conservative pundit who once worked as a policy advisor under President Reagan. Nowadays, he spends his time making crappy conservative films and making an ass out of himself on Twitter, regurgitating conservative talking points, coming up with ridiculous analogies, tennis doesn't work that way, you twit, invoking the Pee Wee Herman defense, and occasionally sticking his foot in his mouth and subsequently getting called on it. And that's just in the last month. And if you're wondering, has he always been this much of a jackass? The answer is, yeah, pretty much. Many years ago when he attended Dartmouth, he was an editor for the Dartmouth Review, an independent newspaper founded by former employees of the school's official newspaper. During his time as an editor, he oversaw the publication of an article called, This Show Ain't No Jive, Bro, a critique of the school's affirmative action policies written in Ebonics. Classy. Since then, D'Souza has seemingly built a career on being one of this country's great leading douchebags. In 1995, for example, he published a book entitled The End of Racism, which by most accounts was, ironically, pretty fucking racist. He referred to blacks' relationship with the government as parasitic and suggested they actually benefited from slavery in the long run. And if America owed blacks reparations for slavery, perhaps blacks in turn owed America for abolishing it. This guy is unfucking believable I guess this shouldn't be a surprise. This guy is so racist he hates his own people. Oh, but it gets better. He would continue to be a raging shit weasel in 2007 with his book The Enemy at Home, in which he placed the blame for 9-11 squarely on the left. And I don't just mean Democratic politicians, he blamed everything that he saw as leftist, including Brokeback Mountain, the vagina monologues, Planned Parenthood, and the very concepts of divorce and adultery. Speaking of divorce and adultery, that's what ultimately shattered his glass house. In 2010, he had accepted a position as president of the Evangelical King's College in New York. But his tenure did not last long when they discovered he had been having an affair with a married woman, while he himself was also married at the time. Christians tend to frown on that sort of thing. Most people tend to frown on that sort of thing. But wait, there's more! His relationship to this woman further complicated matters when he attempted to use her as a straw donor for Wendy Long's 2012 New York Senate campaign. Basically, he had this woman and one of his employees each donate $10,000 to Long's campaign and then reimburse them as a way of getting around his legal individual contribution limits. He was caught because he's a moron. And this is actually where our story begins in Hillary's America. Take it away, Denny. It all began when the Obama administration tried to shut me up. Ho oh, ho, right out the gate. So you might be wondering, where the fuck did that come from? Well, before D'Souza made Hillary's America, he made 2016, Obama's America. Or is it Obama's America 2016? Not important. I haven't seen it, but according to those who did, it was an anti-Obama film that basically amounted to 90 minutes of choir preaching. But the interesting thing, and by interesting I mean stupid, is Mr. D'Souza claims his arrest for making an illegal political contribution was a direct retaliation by the Obama administration for the film. Way to take responsibility for your actions, bro! Now, as laughable as this is for anyone with two brain cells to rub together, as if Obama gave two shits about your movie, D'Souza has publicly not backed down from this claim, even though he sang a different tune in court when he entered his guilty plea. I knew that causing a campaign contribution to be made in the name of another was wrong, and something the law forbids. I deeply regret my conduct. It was a crazy idea, it was a bad idea. 
I regret breaking the law. But even after pleading guilty, outside of court, he was still publicly claiming that the big bad Obama was trying to silence him because he said some mean, nasty things about him in his movie. And he kept publicly repeating this claim before the judge had ruled on sentencing. A move that baffled everyone, especially the judge and his poor lawyer who kept desperately trying to get his client to shut the fuck up. Despite his buffoonery, he somehow avoided jail time and was instead sentenced to five years probation, eight months of which he spent in a halfway house, community service, a $30,000 fine, and weekly psychological counseling. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the therapy is working because he's still cray cray. And what was my real crime? Bestiality? Hey, if you ask a stupid question, we are then presented with a montage of terrible things that President Obama did while in office, like meeting with Raul Castro to repair American-Cuban relations, introducing the ACA to improve the state of healthcare in this country, increasing mortgage regulations after the housing crisis, cutting defense spending since we already spend more than Russia and China combined, and not approving the Keystone XL pipeline over environmental concerns. This will somehow lead to ISIS taking over the world. It makes sense if you don't think about it. If you make a film criticizing the most powerful man in the world, expect the empire to strike back. Funny, I don't recall President Bush throwing Michael Moore in jail when he made Fahrenheit 9-11. And you leave Star Wars out of this. I think I might be the stupidest criminal in the history of American jurisprudence. Every once in a while, the truth sneaks out. Anyway, after a long sequence of bitching and moaning about Obama and his conviction, for which I will remind you again, he pled guilty, we finally get to what we've all been waiting for, the secret history of the Democratic Party. And it begins with Andrew Jackson. I must warn you, what you are about to hear may shock you. Did you know President Jackson, a Democrat, was responsible for the Indian Removal Act, which ultimately led to the Trail of Tears and the deaths of thousands of Native Americans? Oh, if you thought that was shocking, brace yourself. Did you know Jackson owned slaves? Oh yeah, he totally did. In fact, lots of Democrats did. I will give you all a moment to recover from the shock. Sit down, relax, drink some water, take some deep breaths if you need to, breathe in, breathe out, wax on, wax off. You good? Yes? Okay, moving on. Did you know the Ku Klux Klan was founded by Democrats? Again, deep breaths. Yes, it's true. The Democrats were a bunch of racist bastards. In turn, this meant many black Americans at the time, like Ida B. Wells, were members of the Republican Party. Who would have guessed? And did you know President Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, was a segregationist? Isn't that shocking and surprising and something you've totally never heard before because you somehow managed to go through life without ever taking a history class? Okay, obviously I'm being facetious here. None of this should come as a surprise to any American with at least a high school education. Secret history, my ass. Now, there are a few moments where D'Souza plays with history a bit. For example, the brutal caning of Charles Sumner by Preston Brooks did not happen while Sumner was in the middle of a speech as depicted here. D'Souza also claims no Republican ever owned slaves, which, well, if you really want to split hairs, Ulysses S. Grant owned one slave that he inherited from his father, though he freed him a year later, and Kentucky Senator Archibald Dixon owned slaves, and he was a member of the Whig Party, which was a precursor to the Republican Party, but, like I said, splitting hairs. But it really doesn't matter, because by the time the Republican Party was founded, around the time of the Lincoln administration, slavery was pretty much on the way out. So saying Republicans never owned slaves is like saying a Big Mac has nutritional value. Technically it's accurate, but does it mean anything? D'Souza also makes some pretty ridiculous claims on how Democrats view this secret history. Democratic historians celebrate Jackson as a champion of the common man. That's stupid! You're stupid! Stop being stupid! We often hear of the Civil War as a contest between the anti-slavery North and the pro-slavery South. This is Democratic Party propaganda. Says the man who makes propaganda films for a living. 
But a few minor details aside, the history shown in this documentary is quite accurate. Many Democrats owned slaves. Democrats started the KKK. Andrew Jackson was a cock. Andrew Johnson was a cock. Preston Brooks was a cock. Woodrow Wilson was a cock. The early Democratic Party was filled with all sorts of cocks. Here a cock, there a cock, everywhere a cock, cock, E-I-E-I-O. And D'Souza somehow thinks this is concrete proof that the Democrats are the real racists. See? See? We're not racists! You're the racists! I know you are, but what am I? And sure, back then they were. But if you don't think there has been any kind of paradigm shift in the last 150 years, you are either the most naive motherfucker walking God's green earth, or you're trying to piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. Yes, the Democrats founded the KKK. But which candidate did the KKK officially endorse for president in 2016? I'll give you a hint, it wasn't the Democrat. And throughout this so-called secret history, D'Souza keeps showing us reenactments of slaves being mistreated by their masters, as if he thinks he's the next Steve McQueen or something. Seems a bit disingenuous coming from the man who claimed blacks actually benefited from slavery. Oh, but I'm sure he truly cares deeply about the plight of the American slave. When it suits his narrative. He also has a segment on Margaret Sanger, a birth control activist who founded what later became Planned Parenthood. This is where D'Souza goes into full conspiracy theory mode. And yes, he does briefly mention those fucking videos released by the Center for Medical Regress, because of course he does. Will this horseshit never die? And some of what D'Souza says here is true. Sanger once spoke to the KKK, specifically the Women's Auxiliary in Silver Lake, New Jersey. She also spoke to African-American leaders and was highly thought of by W.E.B. Dubois and Martin Luther King. She spoke to anyone who would listen because she thought everyone should have access to birth control, even shitbags like the KKK. And contrary to what D'Souza would have you believe, she was not in favor of using birth control as a method of exterminating the black population of the United States. The movie refers to Sanger once saying, we do not want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And she did actually say this, but it was more in the context of we don't want to give people the wrong idea, rather than we don't want people to find out what we're really up to. But ironically, it did give some people the wrong idea. And here's the thing. Sanger was a fan of eugenics, and I am not about to excuse that. But she did not think eugenics should be based on race or ethnicity, and continually oppose those who did. D'Souza claims the Nazis were big fans of Sanger, but she donated to the American Council Against Nazi Propaganda. So if the Nazis did admire Sanger, the feeling was not mutual. And even though D'Souza already dedicated an entire movie to Obama, he still has to find time in this one to whine about Obama. And naturally, an attack on Obama wouldn't be complete without Obamacare. And don't get me wrong, the ACA ain't perfect, and to say it got off to a rocky start would be an understatement. But do not try to tell me nothing good has come from it. I personally went through a period of unemployment last year, and the ACA is the only reason I had health insurance during that time, because Cobra is a fucking joke. But there's still plenty of room for improvement, and now that the Republicans control both houses of Congress and the presidency, I'm sure they'll have no trouble coming up with a new healthcare law that's a million times better. Oh, wait. No. That didn't happen. Their new plan was so bad it got Mercy killed before it even went up for a vote. We've learned the secrets of the Democratic Party. What secrets? You have told us nothing that we can't find on Wikipedia. So by now you're probably wondering, isn't this movie called Hillary's America? Does D'Souza ever actually talk about Hillary? And yes, he does. An hour and 15 minutes in. Good grief. And much like his secret history of the Democratic Party, you probably won't hear anything new. He quickly goes through the laundry list of scandals and non-scandals. There's the accused rapist she defended in court years ago when she worked as a public defender and her allegedly laughing at the victim. She was doing her job, Denny. Even the scummiest of scum buckets is entitled to a legal defense. That's how this country works. And no, she wasn't laughing at the victim, you fucking tool. There's the cattle future scandal. Never charged with a crime. Whitewater. Also never charged with a crime. Travelgate. Ditto. 
and the Clinton Foundation, especially their work in Haiti after the earthquake. And this is probably the closest he ever comes to a valid point. The Haitian relief effort was a giant clusterfuck, and the Clintons deserve their fair share of the blame for that. But their fair share is not 100% as D'Souza implies. Hundreds of millions of dollars were donated to rebuild Haiti, but only about 30 million of that actually came from the Clinton Foundation. It is true that the factory they built did not meet expectations for job creation. Hell, it wasn't even close. But this does not suggest criminal wrongdoing. Incompetence? Absolutely. But that's it. But you know who is guilty of criminal wrongdoing? This guy! And of course, Denny has to mention those fucking emails. Give me strength. All these investigations, all these deleted emails, all these hidden files. What does she have to hide? According to the incredibly lengthy and costly investigations, not a whole lot. But D'Souza doesn't just talk about Hillary, he also has to go after her husband, specifically his extramarital affairs. And it's not like this criticism of Bill is unwarranted, he's a cad at best and allegedly a rapist at worst. But the amazing thing is, D'Souza goes so far as to claim Hillary encouraged her husband's disgusting behavior. Hillary isn't mad at Bill for what he did, she's mad at him for getting caught. Oh, fuck you! How much of a cynical asshat do you have to be to even suggest something like that? If you're going to make such a claim, you'd better have some damn good evidence to back that up. And he doesn't. At all. The really sad thing about all of this is it's not like there aren't plenty of legitimate criticisms of Hillary Clinton. She supports fracking, for example, a practice with potentially devastating environmental effects. The Clinton Foundation has accepted millions of dollars from countries like Saudi Arabia, who have pretty horrible records when it comes to women's rights. And while none of these scandals have ever produced enough evidence to even charge her with a crime, much less convict her, scandal does seem to follow her wherever she goes. And that's not exactly a quality you want in an elected official. And it's not like modern-day Democrats are incapable of being horrible people. Remember Congressman William Jefferson, who was caught with $90,000 of bribery money in his freezer? Or Senator John Edwards, who fathered a child with his mistress while his wife was dying of cancer? Yeah, fuck all of that guy. The point is, I'm not here to sell you on the Democratic Party. I'm not even a Democrat, nor am I suggesting it's wrong for anyone to not like Hillary. Plenty of valid reasons for that. I'm merely suggesting Dinesh D'Souza's arguments for why you should be a Republican and why Hillary and the Democrats are the real bad guys has no basis in reality. His entire argument is filled with wild accusations, conspiracy theories, leaps in logic, and the ridiculous notion that nothing in this country has changed politically since its inception. But D'Souza's batshit crazy theories aside, is the movie at least well made? Well, I've seen far worse, but it has some issues. D'Souza makes some questionable decisions with his narrative, although calling it a narrative is generous. It's more like a collection of loosely connected ideas that was thrown into a blender. And his framing device for uncovering Hillary and the Democrats' secret history depicts D'Souza himself sneaking into the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee. So to uncover Democratic scandals, he's conjuring up images of possibly the biggest Republican scandal in history. That's fucking stupid! The historical reenactments are reasonably well put together. Sure, they look a bit cheap, and the Senate scenes were probably filmed in a warehouse, but it looks okay for a $5 million movie. The budget, however, does not excuse D'Souza's sillier choices. There's a scene that depicts President Wilson screening the birth of a nation at the White House. Again, what a cock. At some point, one of the Klansmen on horseback, I shit you not, leaps off the screen and rides out onto the White House lawn while Wilson looks on in amazement. You know, if the movie had more unintentionally hilarious moments like this, it might actually be worth watching. There's also some questionable editing in the film, like this two-second shot of grainy stock footage of Air Force One. 
Was that really necessary? You're reenacting a scene on an airplane with President Johnson, Denny. I think we can figure out which airplane he's on. And it's not the only time D'Souza throws in a few seconds of old grainy stock footage as an establishing shot. I know he didn't have much money to work with, but he can't have thought this looked good. And then there's Michaela Krantz, the actress who played young Hillary Clinton. Good gravy. She is absolutely insufferable. American policy since then has been to scrupulously respect <laughs> neutrality. Oh, yeah, people. that's real smart. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Her performance is so ridiculous and so over the top that I must ask, how could anyone have looked at this footage and thought, oh yeah, nailed it, that's a performance worthy of an Oscar. Now, I don't know if Miss Krantz deserves all the blame here. Considering who directed this film, it's entirely possible she was simply giving the performance D'Souza wanted. But that doesn't make it any less awful. The movie was awarded a Razzie for Worst Actress, though there seems to be some confusion as to who exactly won that award. The award was officially given to the woman who played Hillary. I naturally assumed that award belonged to Krantz, but most publications have given credit, or discredit rather, to Rebecca Turner, who played the adult Hillary. This strikes me as odd, considering Krantz's performance was so irritating, and the most we saw of Turner in this movie was the back of her head. But maybe that's the joke? I don't know. I don't get the Razzie sometimes. In any case, this movie is an absolute mess. It's little more than an hour and 45 minutes of a sad, strange little man's vanity and paranoia. Cheap propaganda under the guise of a documentary. And I highly doubt it changed anyone's mind on either side of the aisle. It was a financial success, thanks in part to its low budget, and despite having a critical rating of 4%, it does maintain an 81% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes, something even Saving Christmas couldn't pull off. It was nominated for five Razzies and took home four, Worst Actor, Worst Director, and the aforementioned Worst Actress and Worst Picture. While he didn't appear at the award ceremony in person, D'Souza did record a video message thanking the Golden Raspberry Foundation for the awards, which is more than most people do. Unfortunately, even when he's trying to be a good sport, he still can't help being an insufferable ass. It seems it's the only thing he knows how to do. And, 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 and the reason you're giving it to me is because you're very upset that Trump won. If you haven't gotten over it, you probably never will. I'd love to say he was joking, but... Would you believe me if I did? If you haven't seen the movie, good. Whether you're conservative, liberal, or somewhere in between, there's really nothing here for you. It won't do anything to change your mind, it won't tell you anything you don't already know, and there are far better things you can do with an hour and 45 minutes, like watching a dead rat decompose. Trust me, it'll still be far more enjoyable than watching this movie. Next time, we're going to move away from the world of politics, you're welcome, and return to the world of young adult fiction. Suddenly, politics doesn't seem so bad. Until then, I am the Smeghead, and Denny, don't skip your therapy sessions. I just don't agree with your thesis.